Hello everybody, welcome to Letuto de Vito, your favorite YouTube channel. Learning English is not so hard, believe me. If I can do it, you can do it. My cat Lulu is really good at English. He speaks perfect English. Anyway, I hope you're doing fine. I'm doing marvelously well today. Today, we're going to be focusing on Shao, the modal Shao. You know, most of my students are wondering, should we use shall? How can we use it? Is it the same as will? So I thought, okay, let's do this. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to, to, um, to try and explain as simply as I can the use of shall. Okay, let's go, shall we? <laughs> Uh, shall is very British, you have to know this, okay? It's not so commonly used in America, in American English, mostly used in British English. Um, shall, pronunciation, shall, <laughs> shall, nothing more than that, shall. Um, very commonly confused with will or associated with will. They're mostly similar, but there are a few uh, a few differences here and there. Mm, also, shall is formal. Okay, it's 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 very polite. Um, it's not something that you might use on an everyday basis, but still, it is totally acceptable, and it's part of the language. So you need to know about it. And perhaps you can just use it once you're familiar with it. Anyway, um, first things first, positive statement. You can use shall in a positive statement uh, when you want to make a prediction. So speaking about the future, making um, a prediction, expressing the strong possibility or the certainty of an action. So you are not asking a question, you are uh, making a statement um, with a certain sense of, um, of certainty. You feel that this thing is going to happen in the near future. Let's say your wife is pregnant and uh, you are talking together and you say, um, we shall need an extra room for when the baby arrives. Okay, or at work, maybe saying, oh, I shall be there at 9 o'clock a.m. tomorrow. I shall be there. It means that it's going to happen. It's, it's taking place, but in the near future. And, and you feel confident that this is going to happen. Now, in that case scenario, um, shall equals will. It more or less means the same. Okay, you can say, I will be there. I shall be there. It's just that it's a little bit more formal. That's, that's about it. Now, shall can also be used in the negative form. But once again, it's rather formal. Um, it, you find shall or shall not or shan't. Um, but that's a very British way of speaking. It, not even speaking, you read that basically in old uh, novels, old literature, shall not. Uh, in the Bible, for example, when you hear um, in the Old Testament, for example, thou shall not kill, you know, the Ten Commandments, thou shall not kill. Or, you know, in the Lord of the Rings, uh, you shall not pass. All these sentences are absolutely grammatically correct, but you are not very likely to be using them um, in uh, everyday English. Now, speaking of everyday English, there's a third way you can use shall, and that is when you are asking a question. You just need to realize one thing. Shall, when, when you ask a question, shall is used in the first person, singular, and the first person, plural, with I and we, okay? And most of the time, you are using shall when you are waiting for the other person's approval. You want to know their opinion and 
you'd be very happy to get their feedback. For example, case number one, when you make an offer. Um, shall I switch on the lights? You realize that it's dark in the room, you want to know if anyone would like to get some light, and you offer. Shall I switch on the lights? So you're waiting for the other people's approval. Shall I pick you... Shall I pick you up after work? Shall I pick you up after work? Shall I? You're making an offer, a generous offer, to pick somebody up after work. Perhaps the person is going to say, no thanks, I'm good. Um, or I walk home, no problem, thank you. Thanks for asking, thanks for offering this. Um, but you are definitely trying to be nice and waiting for um, someone else's approval. Third example, maybe, shall I, shall I help you with the dishes? Shall I help you with the dishes? You're offering your help, which is very nice of you. Shall I? Shall I? Okay? Now, there's a second way to use shall. Um, it's when you make a suggestion, which is, let's be honest, it's, it's kind of close to what we've just seen. Um, so, making a suggestion, like, um, um, shall, we go, shall we go for a walk? Shall we go for a walk? Um, you want to go for a walk, you think that other people may too, so you're offering, you're making a suggestion. Shall we? Okay, so now you're including the rest of uh, the people around you. So, shall we go for a walk? Oh yeah, good idea, sounds good to me. Shall we? Shall we? Um, shall we get something to eat? Shall we? Shall we? Shall we get something to eat? So, once again, you're making a suggestion and you use shall for that. There's another way um, of using shall as a suggestion tool. It's um, using the expression, let's do this. For example, instead of saying, shall we, shall we, shall we grab something to eat? You could very well say, let's go and grab something to eat. Shall we? So now you're using what we call a question tag. And it's a very useful tool, the question tag. It's a sort of question that doesn't necessarily imply an answer from um, the person you're talking to. However, it's a nice way to, um, to make a suggestion. Let's go and grab something to eat, shall we? Shall we? And, and the intonation goes up, okay? Higher pitch. Let's go to the restaurant, shall we? All right, let's go, let's go for it. Using will in that situation would not work the same, uh, especially with you. If you say, will you, will you go grab something to eat or will you switch on the lights? Then it's no longer a suggestion, but rather an order. You're implying that you would like someone else to do this for you. Like, w would you close the door, please? All right. So there is a clear distinction between will in a question, especially with will you, and shall I, shall we, um, because you're either making your suggestions or you are implying an order. That's about it. That's about it. Shall can be used in the positive sentence. It's the equivalent of will, saying something that will probably certainly happen. Shall is sometimes used in the negative form, but that's really formal and that's not commonly used. And shall is most often used in, in a question, implying that you're making an offer to someone or that you're suggesting something. And I think the most common uh, phrase with shall is the let's go, shall we? Okay, that's, that's something that you hear really, really um, often in, um, in, in everyday English. Right. Thank you so much for watching. I'm, I'm happy to do this. I hope it's useful once again. Um, please consider subscribing to my channel and keep watching and talking about the Tutor de Vito. That's, that's a huge help for me. Keep smashing this, uh, this like button as well. And I hope you will have a fantastic day. And um, I can't wait to see you in the next episode. Bye for now. Cheers. Take care, everybody.